Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next 30, we're going to call this meeting the Jackson City Council to order. This is meeting is being conducted under the Open Meetings Act of Texas. We have people that have signed up to, to speak during our public forum section. If you've not signed up and would like to, the papers are over there. At this time, we're going, we do have a forum present. Uh, we are going to do the Pledge of Allegiance, and after we do the Pledge, please remain standing for the Department of Education. Pledge of Pastor Jeff Stanley from the Joshua Assembly of God Church. A lot of yours, sir. You can bow your hand, please. Father, we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you, Lord, that we can come and do this together as a free nation. Father, I, I thank you for your many blessings. Now, Father, I pray for each civil servant. I pray, pray for the police officers, the firemen, each and every one that you put your biggest, strongest angels around them always, Lord. And Father, I thank you for our elected officials. God, that you give them wisdom, knowledge, and strength that only can come from the throne of God. Rachel, you bless this time. Bless each and every family that's here, Lord. In your precious holy name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Sir? Thanks. If there is no objection, I'm going to go ahead and do the after the National Day of Prayer. Pastor Stanley? <laughs> Okay. Whereas throughout history, Americans have lifted up in fervent prayer, prayers to God on behalf of our nation. From the first gatherings of our founding fathers, elected officials have prayed and entreated those that they serve and represent to join them in prayer, including the offers for their declaration of independence. The, the, the authors of their group wrote that they, the representatives of the United States of America, in general Congress, assembled as the secret judge of the world. And carried on to present day presidential proclamations such as last year's invitation to join him in asking for God's continued guidance, mercy, and protection. <clears throat> and whereas the National Day of Prayer has not only been a part of our heritage since it was declared by the First Continental Congress in 1775, but it is a public law established in the United States Congress in 1952, approved by a joint resolution and amended by Congress and President Reagan with Public Law 100-307 in 1988, affirming that it is essential for us as a nation to pray and direct the President of the United States to set aside and proclaim the first Thursday of May annually as a National Day of Prayer. And, whereas in our state and across America, the observance of the National Day of Prayer will be held on Thursday, May 4, 2024, 2023, with the theme, Pray fervently in righteousness and veil of night, based on the James verses in James 5 16. B. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And whereas every first Thursday of May on the National Day of Prayer, we not only express our faith and exercise our freedom in prayer, but unite our hearts and voices in personal prayer and public gatherings throughout our city and across our America. With fervent praise, repentance, love, and humble intercession for our neighbors and nation, holding to the fast promises throughout the Holy Scriptures that the Lord hears and avails much as he answers the faith-filled prayers of his people. Now therefore, I Scott Kimball, Mayor of the City of Joshua, do hereby proclaim May 4th, 2023 as a National Day of Prayer throughout the City of Joshua, and I commend this in service to all of our citizens. National Day of Prayer will be observed at True Life Church, uh, 1131, just down the road here, about a couple of blocks. Uh, on At 7 p.m., uh, Pastor Stanley and his uh, church is going to be putting everything together and leading. You're all invited. Please attend if you can. Chief Gelsler, if you want to introduce your officer, we'll then get back to work. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, 
Mayor and Council, uh, I'd like to introduce Officer Chris Rodriguez and Officer Katie Grambarino. Um, very excited to say that we're not fully staffed with these last two hires. Um, we'll put you on the spot a little bit, but uh, we are kind of the unique one uh, in law enforcement. Right? It's very difficult to attract and retain, and I'm very proud to say that uh, with your support, uh, we're able to attract not only certified individuals, but we're able to attract all. Uh, who can come with? I uh, came through us. Uh, we won't mention the city next to us, but they did come from us with another, with another city here in Johnson County. But uh, Officer Rodriguez comes to us with 13 years experience, uh, and Officer uh, Darren Brennan comes to us with nine years experience. Um, Officer Rodriguez is fulfilling our traffic role. Uh, one of my objectives that I have kept myself in the department is a traditional dedicated traffic position, and he is making quite a lot of new things here. Uh, and Officer Graham Bruno comes to us with a, a plethora of experience which written with, with administrative and CID experience. And so as the department grows, the city grows, uh, we're looking for great things from her in their communication. So uh, we welcome them aboard and make introductions to the history of the document. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Six thirty-seven. We're going to go into our work session. Item number one, review, discuss, and questions related to the budget report and financial statements for 2023. Mr. Lee Cowley. <clears throat> the uh, report, which has lots of negatives in it, will hopefully be cleaned up with the passage of the uh, budget amendment tonight. But the for this month, we've had uh, just the big things. We, uh, Fleet Trans now, uh, we made that payment out in November um, for the uh, for our annual membership, they have started billing again for the last, I believe, three years. Uh, they stopped that billing cycle during COVID and, have, and it was covered by federal funding. And so now we're picking that back up. So that's something that we haven't seen, but we did know it was coming. Uh, we've got a few overages um, in our subscriptions. IT services moving along. You're getting an update from them tonight. Uh, probably the biggest thing that uh, remains to stick out is the... Um, water line infrastructure agreement with uh, the special utility district everything else has been fairly uh routine nothing significant we we do have it doesn't reflect here i'm, I'm told that our first out engine engine 77 the repairs have been made it's been down for several weeks uh, going through a process of elimination and uh, they did find the problem they're working with us now on the bill because so much of the narrowing down process really wasn't necessary and there weren't problems there and they've recognized that. Uh, so the chief and I believe uh, the captain are working with them, uh, working on that price. The truck will be picked up tomorrow and I expect will be put back in service um, very quickly. With that, if you have any questions, I'll uh, I'll be happy to address. I have any questions? Okay. Item two then. Discuss discussion on our homestead exemption. <laughs> so currently, we have a five thousand dollar homestead exemption that the city enacted um, two, three years, two two years ago, three years ago. Um, at the and the the other cities, there are a few cities in the county that also offer that at five thousand dollars. There are none that are above that. The mayor asked that I explore some opportunities to see if we could better that exemption um, for the residents, and we're looking into that. But right now, it looks like um, that based on our numbers, it's either a certain percentage or five thousand dollars, whichever is greater, and so. 
it appears that it's done in $5,000 increments. We're trying to research and find out if it can be something less uh, before we, because once we set it, we go up, we cannot go back. And it's capped for us at $20,000. And so we're, we're looking at that. There's a process and a deadline you have to hit. So if that is something that the council still wants me to pursue, then we will start that. We'll gather those answers and prepare that. It has to be voted on and approved, I believe, by uh, July. There's a date in July um, that it has to be filed and approved in order for it to be enacted. So if that's your desire, we'll continue to do that. Um, we're also watching very closely what the legislature's doing. There, there's bills that is moving through um, that has, I believe, come out of committee that uh, is offering a homestead exemption on school taxes that'll increase from 25,000 to 75,000. Uh, and then the state is going to fund additional, provide additional funding to make that amount up. So um, that's a pretty big hit that, or bump that could be on the way for, for the taxpayers through school taxes. Um, but right now there's nothing, there's nothing as far as I know about local government, but we have the ability to go up to $20,000, but uh, $5,000 will, will be difficult uh, or it could come with some difficulty. So we're going to, before we do it, I want to make sure there's some options. So if that's still something you guys want to do, then we'll continue to pursue that and have that ready for you in May. So if we uh, delay this till May or even June for the final vote, would we We're still fine. have time? Absolutely. Um, yes, sir. Will that give you enough time for budget preparation? Yeah, because it, it, it won't take effect until obviously the next year. And so we'll be able to, yeah, we won't start working on the budget until the end of June. But if it's, we, we'll get serious about it in July when that's when all the uh, appraisals come out, the, the, if we get certified values come out in July. And so we'll know by then if you're going to do it. So we'll be able to plug that in. So I, what I want to do is weigh that between, is that a better option or is there a tax reduction that might be better? Uh, as I explained to the mayor this morning, I believe that um, the way we are situated currently with the growth that we've had, we're probably going to exceed that no new revenue rate this year. Um, because of all the, the new home building and, and stuff that's gone on. So we may end up lowering the tax rate to get under that number. So it, I'm not sure that a combination of both will be able to sustain, but we'll start plugging those numbers in. Okay, else any questions? <clears throat> okay, we would not I have another three scope to you update on IP infrastructure, including our broadband and activity pickup. Mr. Patrick, yeah. Dr. Verde is here to go over some updates with you guys. He did. That was a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Let's see if I can get it. Okay. They have a copy of it. Are you all out a copy of it? They do. And they're packed by. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I'm not sure. I believe we discussed last time how our plan to pare down the project was, was going to affect the city. So our, our design currently is a fiber backbone down Main Street. Uh, this will serve multiple purposes. Uh, it will connect all the city buildings uh, on Main Street. The animal shelter, public works, and uh, parks, thank you, uh, will all still connect through a, a new point to point. Currently, the, the antenna that's on the roof is old and it drops signal quite a bit. So, we're going to upgrade that. Everything that all the infrastructure we're planning on putting in the ground will serve the city for probably 30 years. Um, it will also help you keep your data safe, right? Only since we're going to be moving PD in with City Hall, we're, we're going to have a connection down that street, uh, sitting there waiting. But until that project is underway, we're going to light up this building and PD currently. Um, our plan is, along with the fiber backbone, 
is to create a public access for Wi-Fi in the parks. Uh, the other part of that is to upgrade the cameras in throughout the city and add cameras at park for crime damage. I don't know if we discussed this previously, but the, the cameras that were installed last year, year ago, year and a half ago, year and a half ago, um, when they were installed, they were end of life. And they're also not they're they don't they don't meet the no Chinese camera <laughs> requirement, um, unfortunately. So uh, the are gonna have to go regardless. The good news is we're gonna put new cameras in as part of this project throughout throughout the city. We'll replace all the existing cameras and add cameras at the parks. All of those will be able to be relocated to the new building. So they'll have multiple uses. Um, do you have any questions on that so far? So our current kind of connectivity with public works, parks, and all that's done through a wireless link. Currently, we have a wireless link on top of the TV connecting those those points. Yes, that is correct. Uh, if we're we're putting the the black cyber in, the black, in well, yeah, yeah. Why, why would we not go over? We can. It's, it's just an additional cost. We're, we're trying to do a cost a cost effective solution since, as we talked to Mike, most of those buildings are going to be going away in the next three years. Is that about right, Mike? When they do that, possibly. And, and that, we just didn't want to incur the cost. Uh, we're already going to loot this building. We think when they when they hit the street. Thank you, so much. And then, yeah, the reason we decided to stop here and parks there, there's multiple reasons. Uh, that will solve our immediate issue and give us what we need for connectivity. Now. Secondly, uh, into the future, you know, we're in talks with ESD as well as county to connect Burleson to the sheriff's office and potentially uh, ESD. And part of our talks, if you go to um, if you go to slide four, excuse me, slide five. The other way. Slide five. So those are two carriers that are already running up this street. There's one right here, one right back over here. They go, they both go the same direction. This this will be the only route going this direction. It will give us the ability. We we've talked to both of these carriers. Uh, I believe it was Windstream and uh was it Zayo. Uh, these are both tier one carriers. Um, we've, we've talked to both of them about leasing some of our fiber for access. Um, they said until it's in the ground, it's it's all work, you know, not that we can really propose day and night. But because there is no other fiber going that direction, uh, it's a possibility for us to lease it to them, parts of it. We're going to have 96 strands, so we're going to have lots of it. The city's only going to use four. That's all connect all the city. Um, that'll give us you know 92 strands to be able to lease back. Um, we have talked to the sheriff's office. Uh, as you know, we're working with Johnson County on some other things. When this new CAD system gets installed, they're gonna need to get the and I think Jeff talked about this. They're gonna need to get the data from the old CAD system. They've got to get it, they've got to transfer somehow. The only the only connection is going to be Burleson's right here uh, where 174 and Main Street meet. They're about 400 feet up up 174. So we're right there at the park. Our plan is to, when the sheriff wants to connect, we'll have them fund that part of the project for the connection, and we'll be able to lease back some of that for them for connecting back to Burleson. Our goal is to connect. The sheriff's office, Joshua, ESD, and Burleson at some point in the near future, which will be a revenue stream for the city for, for Joshua. Uh, did that answer your question? Yes. Okay. So if you go to slide five, uh, I think we discussed uh, the use of the fiber. Um, 
It also gives us the ability to, to lease it to sell carriers. So once it's in the ground, we have we have the leverage to go and talk and pursue these other carriers to lease that that fiber from us, right? Um, that's really what gives us the leverage. On uh, slide seven, as I as I discussed momentarily, we will be providing public Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi, the outdoor Wi-Fi that we're proposing to put in will broadcast for about a mile. So it will give access to folks in the area as well as in the park. So uh, we have we have quite a bit of coverage there. So it should be a fairly strong signal for anybody. If they, anybody in the city needs public Wi-Fi, they can go to the park and have public Wi-Fi. I know we talked about um, other phases of this project. We'll have the ability to tie into this at any time and expand it if, if we need to in the future. Um, all of that's going to be built into this part of the project. Okay. Slide eight. Like I discussed, it eliminates the need for multiple internet connections. Currently, we're using um, internet connections here. We've got an internet connection at Fire. And we have one more. Uh, PD and Annex. PD and Annex, yeah. So our plan is to create an environment where we have a redundant circuit. So it will automatically, if one of them fails, it will automatically fail over to the others to keep, to keep the city up. This is how we design most of the modern cities now <laughs> um, for reliability for, for our peace officers as well as fire <laughs> to make sure they stay connected. Um, Plan is to put a connection, a lit connection, and I, I'll explain what a lit connection is. A lit connection at, at fire and a lit connection here, two different carriers. What that gives us is diverse uh, ability to use different carriers because they're going down different paths. Uh, lit services is the, the services that will get you to the internet. Um, with our dark fiber, it allows the city to communicate within, within the facilities all the buildings with each other to share data on a private uh, dedicated network, as well as share those internet signals. So those lit services will come in right on our dark fiber, broadcast Wi-Fi, all of that on our private network. And like I said, uh, we'll have multiple uh, slide files, which will, which will allow us to expand on the network at any time in the city even if it wants to bring services somewhere else. On slide nine, so these are the estimated costs for the project. Uh, the dark fiber backbone, which is the run down Main Street. Uh, fiber segment and slight points that includes boxes, hardware, the fiber. Um, Cameras and power component for parks in the city all itself and the other ancillary buildings for the cameras. Uh, Wi-Fi connectivity, that will be at the park. And then installation and configuration of the public network. <laughs> we, yes, ma'am. The main purpose is to serve the city first, but with our bunch. If we choose, if y'all choose to use any type of ARPA funds by providing public Wi-Fi to the park and also crime prevention capabilities in the park, it allows us to use ARPA funds. But the primary purpose for all of this is to, to provide a secure, I guess, closed network for the city for now and into the future. But I'm just icing on the cake is if we were to ever decide to sell off any of the strands. We would have the capability of recovering some of the costs. We don't. We'll lease, lease that. But we're not providing like the actual internet service. We're providing a connection to a internet service provider to then resell. So, but there's multiple pieces of it. But this would allow us to upgrade and get in compliance with all of our cameras across the city, but also to, to provide much better. Security coverage for the parks because, as you know, y'all been talking about doing some pretty significant park upgrades, and it would actually allow us to to control the management of vandalism and terrorism. And that, that our biggest thing is 
securing the network here, keeping it secure, making sure we're compliant with all the features you're talking about, and getting out in front of Joshua is growing, and it's going to continue to grow like all the city here in John County. Um, there's a lot of this going on, and we're doing a lot of these projects. So it's important to the future of the city. How far does it go down? Does it reach out of Joshua Station? It's going to go. It's going to go. Joshua Fire Station. No, Joshua Station. Crusher's something. Kirk Burn Wade's going to stop here. Yeah, there's a map on. We're going to stop here with, with the ability to add on to it. Okay, yeah, so first phase. First phase, first. correct. And and this is the biggest part. The backbone part is the biggest part. And this is the biggest part of the infrastructure project. You know, into the future, um, if he has, let's say ESD wants to connect or Johnson County Sheriff wants to connect, we can have a joint venture project with them. There's lots of options in, in the future. If a carrier wants to pull some fiber off the network, light up an area, we can do joint ventures with them as well. So there's a lot of opportunity for, for fund use for different different in the future. Any other questions? Good. While I'm up here, does any do you need any IT updates? Um, <clears throat> why don't you just kind of give us a quick rundown there? The 737 uh, what updates you've, you've got in this slide. Um, that's a couple of minutes. So we we in the last few weeks we moved the city to new servers. Um, the old servers I crashed. Well, one of them had crashed. We're still working on trying to retrieve that data. Um, we're trying to do it in the most cost-effective way. Some of the data recovery, the, the quote we got from the data recovery specialist was about twenty-four thousand. So we're trying to do it within the budget of what we've already paid for installing these new servers. We have we have a guy on staff. He's working on it. He's making progress. He'll know by Monday. Uh, whether he can get the data, he says he's making some progress on. It. So, um, that has said it is moving over, but it's straight and slow because anytime it goes over a certain speed, it's it's crashing. The well, this this that was that was server two. That was Zen two. That's the one we finally got the information on Zen one, the, the primary file server where a lot of things were stored. Had. The interface where it connected to the network broke it broke. And it wouldn't, we could we could see it, but we couldn't retrieve anything. When we got here, both of those servers would crash times a day. We were hoping to limp them along, and we kind of got to a point where we had to buy servers and put them in, and we just didn't get to it in time to get everything moved on. Um as far as we did, the data, is the data is still there, and it's, we're going to be able to get the data 100. percent It's just whether it's cost effective or expensive. That's where we're at with that. Tickets, we've been working through uh, the multitude of tickets. Uh, we have a couple uh, issues over at PV with cars connecting and downloading. We thought we had it fixed. Uh, we are working on that. Uh, I'm hoping to have a resolution for that by Monday for them. Um, I'm going to be, I'll be here tomorrow working on not only fire, they've got a new alarm system going in, but I'm also going to be using the backup servers or backup storage units we have here over, over to PD, put them over there in the rack, get them out of the closet here. Um, Alice, we've worked on a few of hers. Uh, Everything's still not perfect, and it probably won't be for a while yet, because a lot of our data is still on that primary server. And until we get that that information off and loaded onto the new servers, it's just going to be we'll have to just day to day operations. Is what we're doing right. So it's her fault. That's right. I touched it. 
I mean, even Microsoft, we, we, we've got these thought issues, but we're still trying to work through. Uh, for us, it's about being able to function day to day and not crashing and losing everything. You know, I think most of that has been mitigated. We're not losing everything every day. So that was partially because of the servers. Uh, so we're still working through uh, some some connectivity with the place cards uh for uploading we thought like i said we thought we had it fixed uh, but apparently we don't so it's probably probably not that big of a deal it's just a matter of pointing things in the right direction rerouting them um like i said we're just trying to keep everything up and running at this point until we get everything settled on the new servers and then we start mapping them and making sure everything's running smooth at that point. Uh, what about backups? Have, have, have we got things set up? Backup, backup, yes. Backing up our data on a regular basis. Yes. Yes. And we have those Synology backups. That's not supposed to be moving over to PD, another permanent home. And then um, our plan is into the future, is to create probably down to fire or at the new city hall, a disaster recovery location. To where we'll put that where we'll put backups so that everything will be copied there and if a natural disaster hits we have we have redundant cost so anybody else have any questions for me okay thank, thank you so much for your time there, everybody. okay we'll do uh update mayor some members and, and city staff members johnny you got anything no sir probably here okay. Um, I'm sorry, I missed the lunch. The chamber. Okay. Well, it's been, been a busy week uh, for me so far. Um, I did have the honor of going to the ISD uh, board meeting on Monday night and presenting a uh, proclamation for our state champion weightlifter in the 181 pound class. Uh, that was an awesome thing to see those, those young people there. There's four, four of them from the weightlifting team that actually uh, went to state and a couple of them actually placed. So that, that was really good. Uh, on Saturday the 15th, uh, Molly actually attended a brunch with the Girl Scouts to present a proclamation for uh, one of our local Girl Scouts who received the Gold Award. Um, I got to speak at Hill College to their governing class. Uh, and to stay away from elected service. <laughs> it, it was an interesting session. Uh, I did find out something about our police chief I did not know. Uh, he can quote Shakespeare, so and many talents. So, <laughs> um, and it's got it's <laughs> um, we have a big event coming up Saturday. I'm going to ask Ms. Ops to share that. Josh, we're united. Um, it's a group of pastors from this community and some local organizations has teamed up to create Joshua United. Um, we're planning on about 40 vendors that's going to be in a park, which is quite a few. Um, five bounce houses, a couple of them obstacle courses, so it's going to take up the whole baseball field on one side. We're going to have a pet and zoo, 20 to 25 animals, including a miniature donkey. Um, animal services is going to be there adopting out animals. And I have a booth for the mayor and the council. Y'all welcome. And then there's several departments that's going to be there. 11 to 3. Yes. And we are running shows. Three shows. Correct. Uh, on the 29th of April, we have another big event coming up. 
the Joshua Sixth Police Academy Alumni Association is having their annual play shoot. Um, Mr. Merle here is chairing that, and running it, and, uh, doing an excellent job putting everything together. Do you have an idea of approximately how many teams you've got so far? And there's, if everybody comes, it looks like we're going to have 10 teams at this point, uh, about 40 people. We've got several sponsors from within the city and everything. Uh, the Alumni Association does great things for our police department. Get a chance to come out here Saturday just to kind of see what's going on and everything at, at our time. It's, it's an event to be the hell. So, anybody else have anything? We are just to remind everyone that early voting starts Monday. Um, it goes all next week and then Monday to two, Monday and Tuesday, May 1st and 2nd at 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And then election days on May 6th at the high school. If you noticed, you've each got the packet that we put down on your place. The first one uh, is a rendering of the challenge coins, the official challenge coin of the city that we're putting together. <clears throat> You guys will be giving these to distribute to various people, people collectors, other council members you meet, travel residents, things like this. Got to be a pretty, pretty popular collectible thing. People are starting to collect these things, myself included. I've got them all over the place, but um, that'll be coming in a few weeks, and we'll get those all out to you. Also, you've got. Uh, your official city IDs were passed out. I believe Alice put them at your place, so all of you should have those now. Um, actually, I think, Robert, we may still be waiting on yours. Was yours in that batch? No. Okay. Well, if we get it after your time, we'll frame it and send it to you. Um, the other thing is a packet of some information I picked up from the North Texas City Management Association. Um, program a, a week or so back. It's uh, a collection of bills that are moving through the legislature that involve local government from local control to losing control to changes the way the taxes are figured, changes about appraisal values. There's quite a few. It's, as always, it's going to be a difficult year for local government and the legislature. This year, uh, there are they're hitting the schools with a lot of stuff too, as far as um, school security. And uh, it's, there's just a lot going on, but these are things that may be of interest to you that TML, uh, the legislative group are watching and tracking. And uh, as those things change, we'll, we'll bring us up to y'all. That's uh, it for me. One other thing that I did want to mention to y'all, I, I don't know how uh, well connected you are with other cities or some outstreets things going. Uh, I attended a luncheon the other day with three other mayors and all three of them asked me what we were doing to make our city run so smoothly. And the only answer I can give them is we have one heck of a staff and they are doing a fantastic job. They continue to, to just make this city run like the city's supposed to run. And I also told them that any of them that tried to show up to steal any of them, <laughs> and they'll make it out of hand. But, um, but uh, there are some cities with some really serious issues going on. And when you hear the reasons they're, they're going on, we are truly a blessed city to have the staff, the staff that we have and the council that we have. And I want to thank you all for your service and everything that you do. Uh, it's, it's important what we do. People want to believe that. Or Anything else? Concur. All right. Uh, at this time, we'll go into our public forum. Uh, the council invites citizens to speak on any topic. However, unless the item is specifically noted on the agenda, the city council is required under the Texas Open Meetings Act to limit its response to responding with a statement of specific factual information. Uh, reciting the city's existing policy for person making the inquiry to visit the city staff about the issue. Therefore, no council deliberation is permitted. Each person will have three minutes to speak. Ms. Anderson. Let's put that specifically in there. Thank you for letting me come. 
council, uh, mayor and council, because uh, I'm not a resident of the city anymore. But I was speaking for a group that's near and dear to my heart. Of course, it's the Mountain Valley group. They got a big, huge problem, as I know you all know. God, we got to know because you live up there too. And I'm sure I know y'all are getting millions and millions of calls. It just seems like that. Do you know what I'm talking about? The okay, the overgrown uh, golf course, and it there's all kinds of snakes coming up in the backyard, or is it critters and things like that? And our kids play up there, today, not on the golf. She'll shoot you. Yeah. I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say that. Anyway. But but there's no they're just anytime I was I mean I've had conversations with the night and he's letting me know what's going basically what's going on and what they can do what they can't do but it just seems like there's something that's got to be done the grass is growing up a lot of the residents now are starting to at least mow what's back behind their house and uh, property value gone that. You know, it's, it's it's really a sad situation out there. If if I don't know what the answer is, I'm hoping that if I bring it to you, and if enough people bring it to you, that maybe you might find us an answer. So, that's it. So, did I do it? Yeah. Thank you very much. One breath. <laughs> One breath. Mr. Taylor. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, my name is Douglas Taylor. I live on the golf course, and uh, we're concerned with all the snakes and whatever coming up. Also, really concerned about fire more than I am anything, because it would. We don't want to be having our house burned down just because of the, of the real tall grass during the winter time. It was really dry, so and we hadn't had much rain. So I know y'all, I talked to Mike and you, Scott, and, you know, see what you guys can do or help us out or something. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask you a question? Yes, ma'am. Well, the issue's been brought up what about the city more and the community I'll defer to our city attorney on that. Yeah, but the issue right now is it's related to pending litigation. And so I know that everybody's concerned and is actively trying to have discussions on getting it addressed. Um, and it's also a large piece of property. Yeah. So it's going to take longer than anyone would hope. But there's active discussions going on because everybody understands the concerns. Yeah. But the pending litigation is what it is. Is there any hope inside at all? We're working. It's <laughs> the best. Yes, ma'am. But they've mowed some stuff up on part of it, is my understanding. They've started. I don't know how much progress they've made. We have made that offer through the attorneys that we will send a contractor in to mow it. Um, but so far, they have not responded to that as far as you know. We can, we'll follow up. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else have anything they would like to say or bring up this time? Awesome. Yeah, actually, one thing real quick. Do I need to stand up? Uh, yes, so please state your name and address. So, uh, Dakota Marshall, 1000 Seating Bed. Just wanted to bring up real quick. I think there's some softball games going on in the softball fields too on the 20th this weekend. You guys heard that? We are. Okay, all right, that's and that's all I had. Thank you. Thank you, Dakota. Okay. Moving on to item G, the consent agenda. Uh, we have a discussion, consider a possible action on the meeting minutes of March 16th and March 27th. Have a motion. I can move we accept as stated. Okay, I have a motion by Merle and second by Antla. To accept the minutes as presented. Is there any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Okay. Now, we'll get into our regular items. Number one, discuss the center of possible action on an ordinance approving budget amendment from the warrant fiscal year 22 23. Uh, 
Well, I apologize that by appearance, this is a colossal monster. <clears throat> However, um, the largest item that what makes this um, such a handful is the uh, partnership with the utility district on the water line, that $872,000 payment, uh, which was funded through um, the uh, TIF funds. And so that is showing up. That will be uh, cleaned up in this amendment. Some of the other things that we have uh, <clears throat> put in place, um, there are some, obviously, some of the technology um, issues that you heard about earlier. There were some uh, some fuel adjustments uh, for the cost of fuel in a few areas. The police department, uh, we are funding an after action review of the incident that occurred at the high school um, back on, I believe, February the 14th. Uh, so that is funded. Also, some new vests and shields, uh, $25,000 just over that, but uh, almost 20000 of that is will be reimbursed by grant. Uh, but those funds have not been received. There's some uniform expenditures with the fire department for the new staff that was hired. And then uh, some uh, computer software, um, I believe for here, that's for here, right? For the council stuff, what is the it? software, six thousand dollars for the new software. Yes, the Muni code. That's yeah, probably for the first code, year. Yeah, the, that's the first year stuff for that. So the other things that you're going to see, there's there's been some moving around of money. We transferred, um, moved code enforcement into the police department. So what looks like an increase in salaries in the police department is really not because the money was taken from the fire marshal's office. So that will, will, will level out. Also, um, some administrative assistant uh, that was currently, that was under development services doing uh, garbage collections. She's been moved into administration. So there was a move there that looks like we've added staff, but we really haven't. It's come from somewhere else. So, the overall net is about on par with what has happened in the past, uh, with the exception of what has just kind of jumped out at us or, uh, with the water line and stuff, which is obviously the biggest piece of this pie. And then there was a transfer. Um, I had a little issue with, but I'm, I'm over it now. The auditors wanted a transfer made. Um, we typically fund uh, CIP. We approve that budget each year, and then we move money from the general fund once those items are purchased. Uh, the auditors didn't like that. They wanted that funded like any other line item. So the money that has been set aside to pay for those CIP items have been moved into that CIP account. So that's another two hundred and forty some odd thousand dollars that um, that shows up. So it's money that was budgeted. It just hadn't been transferred yet, but we did make that transfer at their request. Um, they thought that that would be a big help to them next year going forward. So all of that said, that is all in this amendment, and that will make about 99% of all those little negative numbers that have been driving you all crazy for uh, the first six months will go away. Will that affect those, like the miscellaneous lines, the high percentages over and all Yes, sir. A lot of what you see, the reports that y'all get each month are kind of scaled down, paired up versions. There's many more line items. And so sometimes when you've got, you may only have a few little changes, but when you combine two or three areas, that make it look worse than what it is. But the we'd have to print out an entire budget sheet for you guys each year or each month if we did it the other way. So this, we kind of condense it as small as we can, but still give you a picture. But all those negatives and underfundings will go away. Question? Okay. Second motion. Thank you. Approve the budget for the year. Thank you. Second. Okay. I've got a uh, motion by Shell to approve the mid year budget amendment and seconded by Mr. Kidd. It's great discussion. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, item number two discuss, consider, and possible action on the 380 agreement pathway communications to provide fiber internet service in Mountain Valley and States area. This is the uh, agreement that the uh, council approved. 
uh, pending the agreement last month. Uh, city attorney drew up the agreement that we uh, provided. We cleaned a few things up with Pathway. Ray is here tonight if y'all have any questions. But this is the 50% match in the amount of $125,000 that uh, will be going to Pathway to take to run that uh, that project. And um, they the the agreement came back. He got it done. Um, but the approval last month did not authorize the signing of the agreement. So that's why we brought it back today. And we'll need to get authorization for the mayor to sign that agreement. And Ray, uh, the general manager of Pathways here, if you guys have any additional questions, uh, he said he's willing to put up with some torture tonight. Just a little bit. Uh, once we get this all approved and everything, what kind of time frame are we looking? So we got to get material ordered. I told Mike this morning, I'm going to order material, obviously, to get signed. That's probably six to eight weeks. Uh, and then I talked to our contractor today that he's. Uh, I understand part of this was going to be in ground above ground. The uh, materials are probably going to be sure. All of all of them. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, and one of my neighbors asked, does that mean I'm going to have to have another big box in my yard? Other so we put a panel around that. And go in there, just so everybody knows, we go down the utility and they're going to bore it. So they can bore about a thousand feet. And so at that point, and they'll be the biggest spot there to go back in the ground. But they will go back and place saw a bill. As they like, will it be at the street or will it be at the street? I think we decided the utility is going to be back. So I, I think the majority of them are in the back. I think you can move some of the golf course while you're out. For a nominal fee, yeah. Okay, so uh, does this motion specifically have to state authorizing you to sign it, or it'd be easier because your name's already printed on it? So I don't want to have to have you change it just to change the name. So I don't mind not signing them at all. So. <clears throat> Mayor, I will move to approve three eighty agreement with Pathways Communications to the United Fiber Internet Service to Mountain Valley Estates. And have the mayor sign the agreement. Okay, so I have a motion by Johnny and a second by Jelly to approve the 380 agreement, pathway communications, uh, internet service to Mount Valley, and authorizing the mayor to sign it. Is there any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you, sir. Hello. Go ahead. So we got five or half a mountain, full mountain better right now. Not in well in certain Can you down the all the way down? Okay, we're seventy over here, guys. Um, I'm going to discuss the second possible action on funding a drainage impact fee study with new gen strategies and solutions in the amount of $40,000. Yeah. So, as you all know, stormwater runoff and drainage um, is becoming more and more of an issue uh, with multiple state and federal unfunded mandates. And, um, you know, the city was built years back with bar ditches versus stormwater drains, which is what we're doing now. 
Um, we've got there's a lot of areas that are just problematic and and stay that way. Most, a lot of homeowners can't mow those areas because of the the, the slopes of the walls and 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 course drainage is a utility that uh, unfortunately the state has decided that we're responsible for it, even though they own the water. So they say. Um, at some point, it is my belief that we're going to have to look at some sort of a drainage impact fee. We have been hesitant to do that, as many of you know. It's not been something we've tried to absorb it. We can continue to try to absorb it, but at some point, we are going to have to face this fact that it, it's just a problem. We cannot assess an impact fee without a, a study um, to set the parameters of that. There's two dip different options to do that. Option one uh, is a, a based on the number of residents, it'll put together a, a cost for CIP and the necessary data and give us some kind of guidelines on what the funding could or should be. Option two is a more in-depth study, uh, but it obviously is more expensive and it would include <laughs> impervious surface calculations um, where you've got large parking lots, schools, churches, grocery store. Uh, of course, you know, schools and churches most of the time get exempted out of those. Something you can give credit for on-site detention. There, there's a lot of formulas. I think for our size, that's going to be much more cumbersome than what we need. I think we're, we need something simple and basic, uh, a fee that will either allow us to contract this work or to continue to purchase and approve equipment to do it. We can do some of it uh, where we struggle or where there are uh, culverts. Uh, sometimes, depending on the length of them, we, we don't have the ability to get in and clean those, to blow those out. Um, we have had some, Jason has helped us a lot of times with the back truck, um, but that's a million dollar truck. And so it's, it's, you know, you can't just go and buy one. Um, we've got a contractor that has also brought one out uh, when we've done big projects or multiple projects. But right now, all of that is coming out of public work street funding money. And as you all know, we have roads to repair also. So this is becoming more and more of a problem. But the first step to doing anything is to have this study done. We've talked about it before. Um, and so I, I thought it was time to have that conversation again. Uh, we've been uh, talking with uh, New Gen Strategies and Solutions. This is their specialty. Uh, you have a the proposal in front of you, and they have a representative here tonight. If you have any questions about that, uh, it will be uh, Andy McCartney. Be happy to explain those. And if this is something y'all want to take a look at now, or. <clears throat> How do I better understand the difference between the two options? I mean, if we're going to be depending on what we're going to be responsible for. Right. And the, the more expensive option deals with uh, obtaining that aerial imagery and doing the specific calculations for each customer's parcel. You know, the amount of impervious area where water cannot sink so to the ground. So that would be the driveways. Uh, the structures itself. So doing that precise calculation and then segmenting those properties by their uh, square footage of an impervious area. So it's much more dated and so, and uh, it's kind of a more manual process, unfortunately. So are there any challenges that you would anticipate that we might face if you didn't take that off? Uh, the biggest one is, you know, getting that area for the injury, uh, finding out what it's the adder. But the uh at the uh Johnson County Appraisal District has that, you know, attached to the property <laughs> records. So uh some appraisal districts do have that imagery, but it's just, you know, that's the only thing is they don't have it. Trying to map that specifically to that parcel. And just starting out, we we buy the two options because Generally, for a uh, municipality, it's trying to establish this one water using <laughs> just to take a step first before you dive off into a bigger study. And 
Yeah, we're doing a similar uh, type of the study, the, the less expensive option for Sanger, uh, which is up more of the so that they decided to do this. They started um, in several months ago. So talking to uh, Mr. Peacock, we talked. We say that there was an option before we make it into the future and incur additional because we didn't. Well, yeah, and the study would probably need to be updated as you know, you're uh, more cost and more of a CIP plan to capture that into your drainage fee. And and so, uh, yeah, this is just starting out trying to get, you know, the, you know, the Bare bones started for this stormwater utility. So how often do you think that this study would need to be redone? Probably every three to five years. Say we want to do as well every. Uh, yes, it's because they're starting out. Yeah. That's why we thought it was the the least cost alternative. You know, take like that first step first. The debate on instead of trying to you know, update it, doing the same thing just to see how it works for you know, your community. And, and I will tell you, um, I, I'm the former assistant finance director for the uh, neighboring city here, and at least two different occasions we uh, had staff had tried to get a stormwater utility established, but uh, the council said no, not at this time. We're okay with it being situated in the general fund. And, and use an ad valorem taxes to fund the stormwater uh, operations as part of the transportation and public works. Right. I understand because I used to be a resident in Johnson County. So I, when, when Mike told me, I, I realized that when it did rain here, uh, kind of the flooding problems it causes along the Village Creek. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. Currently, we, we have the mandate of how we have to control flood water, the unfunded mandate, state and federal. Correct. Right. Do we foresee in the foreseeable future where these are going to, I mean, we've got mandates, but because of the size of the city and everything, we've been able to kind of work at the low end of what's required. We, will the study show what we need to be moved up into the <clears throat> of that or no, it's basically I, I think what the study will help us do is that there's there's always grant opportunities out there a lot of times when you search them out and find them. But almost all state and federal grants, before you can tap those, you got to have a study. Everybody wants yes. this. Will the, will the minimal study be enough to qualify for grants? Should. Yeah, yeah it's, it's mainly developing that need for your capital improvement program plan or CIP and, you know, having that utility established and having a fee, having it recently updated does, you know, <clears throat> show favor. Did we not have this study done seven, eight years ago? We had a study done in 2008, but it was only in three neighborhoods Joshua Meadows, the Cofield area, and Mountain Valley along Village Creek. Those were the three areas that were studied, but that, that was the only parts. And I, was, I, I remember the study. And that was, it was a 2008, done by T. Norman Burke. Does, does this study um, assess our current areas of water retention and the things that the city already has in place? Or is it just a... No, it's more of a fee study where we look at, you know, we look at the properties and, and to determine, you know, a, a fee is basically a fraction. So you got the dollars, you know, what it costs to operate, provide the stormwater service. And then the uh, denominator part is, you know, the, the parcels, the sizes, and, and that it's not, you know, are you, you know, what do you need to do to to get the storm water to, to move that doesn't flood? That's more of a professional engineering type of study. 
So we're we're a financial consulting firm specializing, in, you know, water waste, water, stormwater, solid waste, and uh, electric utilities. I've also got some information that we've reached out to um, T. Nolan Perkins uh, that has some of that data. Uh, I, we haven't got anything submitted back by them yet to get some numbers on this more detailed engineering study just to kind of to pair with it. Yeah, we would have to take, you know, the, what the consulting engineer comes up with for, you know, any capital improvements. Um, any maintenance activities that they might estimate and put that into the, you know, either the O&M, projected O&M, or into, you know, the CIP plan, which has to be funded some way, either through fees or through a debt issuance. And you're probably wanting to just look at, see what you can fund through the fees. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that, that person, but you did check with other firms as far as cost and so on and so forth? Yes, sir. Any studies do you think we've done? I mean, how many different cities do you think this is Like recently, we have been in the middle of doing Sanger, Tyler, Middle Wells, Roanoke, Astrop. Any more questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. So, is there a motion? Make a motion that we approve based on the vote. Uh, the 4,000? The 4,000, yes. Okay. Do I have a second? Yes. Yeah. What what benefit would it do for his town drill? <laughs> Mike, if we we just motion the, the forty thousand, tell me what the benefit would be down the road. Just decide to go with the seventy thousand. The seventy thousand dollar study get will give us. What my concern is, is that it'll give us different classifications, different rates based on the size of the lot, size of impervious surface. Is there a parking lot? Is there on-site detention? And I'm afraid it's going to create a building nightmare for us. And, and that's why at this point, I don't want to go that route. I would rather be able to assess a flat fee if... If it's at some point approved, this doesn't necessarily mean that that y'all are going to approve this thing next year. I think this has come up three or four times since I've been here, and we've passed on it each time. Uh, you may do the study, and still next budget year, you may say, "Nope, we're going to fund it another year out of the general fund," and okay, uh, that's fine. But if you decide to do it, we would have to have this in place. And with this in place, we can reach out and pursue grant opportunities and other funding opportunities outside for targeted projects. So it, it, it's really, it's kind of a baby step. Uh, I'm I'm not crazy about another fund I know, or another fee. I know nobody is, but we also get constant phone calls about flooding. And I mean, there are flooding problems out there. I mean, they just, they just are. <coughs> Okay, so we have a motion by my section and Merle to uh, approve the funding for the drainage impact fee study at $40,000. Is there any other discussion? Okay. Uh, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Next item, discuss, consider possible action on approval of an agreement without the testing, show testing for the municipal peacock. So Alpha Testing is a testing firm that we've used in projects in the past. We've used them, fire department, park, uh, the park and ride, the YMCA, all of uh, the soil testing for us, we've used Alpha. This one is another one that will uh, get us started as we're 
you move through the design phase and the layout of the, the municipal complex and this puts that agreement in place. It could be that much as projected, depending on what we find, if they hit bedrock, if they don't, there's a lot of things that uh, could adjust that price a little bit, but uh, that's based on the projected square footage of the building, uh, which could, could reduce a little bit because the building is a little bit smaller than, than what the initial layout was. So it, it would be probably a little bit less than that, but this, this gets us set up for the testing, which is probably be ready to start doing in the next six weeks or so. That total cost was $41,267.92. Yes, sir. And that would be funded through the funds that have been established um, that's already in-house and for, for that development. So it wouldn't come out, wouldn't come out of reserves or... Okay. <clears throat> Move for approval of the testing testing for the municipal complex. Okay, I have a motion by John, seconded by Angela. Yes. We agree without the testing, soil testing for the municipal complex. Any discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Next item, discuss, consider possible action on the policy for facade improvement grant funded by ADC and ARPA funds. This uh, was the discussion that we had previously. We sent it back to type A for some changes in what we were looking at. Uh, type A approved them unanimously, if I understand correctly. Correct. Okay, and uh, they're back to us now for our final approval. So, anybody have any questions or motion? <laughs> I'll make a motion we accept 41,000. No. No, no, we're talking about it. Okay. I'll make a motion we accept it. I'll see for the same grant funded by the aid board. I'll second. Okay. Second. Okay. 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 Okay, we have a motion by Merle, seconded by Robert, to approve the policy for solid improvement grant funded through Type A, B, C, and all the funds. Any discussion? Do we have anybody interested in that? We haven't considered it because it hasn't been, it hasn't been approved. We've been waiting all this time for it to be approved. We, we have one person that's that we've sent a packet to. Okay. That's a, so, I mean, that was going to be my question after we were voting. Are we going to be able to know by the chamber that this is finally done? So yes. Yeah. Yep. And, yeah, we'll get it set out. We'll get it on the website. So we've got one person already and maybe a second. Okay. So we have a motion. Second. Uh, any more discussion? Okay. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Okay. Does anybody have any questions on any of the staff reports? Okay. Uh, once again, I want to commend our staff for, for the reports that we've got. Uh, our fire department continues to, to improve and uh, do what they're doing. And I would like the Chief Council to know that they did receive a comment about the police department just today. Um, they were upset that they got the ticket, but they knew they deserved it, and the officer was very, very professionally. They were, were grateful that we have officers who treated the citizens with respect. And that, that comes from the leadership of the class. Thank you very much, sir. And I also had a, with my chiropractor today, and he said, I met one of your Joshua's finest this morning. <laughs> so with my bill going up, he said he was very professional and just appreciated him and wanted to be passed to the chief. A little more positive, yeah. <laughs> I can tell you that for my department, you know, it takes a long time. Information lags, um, they're very, very uh, thankful for the ability for you guys to assist other agencies and what you got to do. Their collaboration is important, yeah. <laughs> Shakespearean folk course, I do not. I 
Ladies and gentlemen, at 7.45, this meeting's adjourned. Hey, me. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right.